Hello everybody and welcome back to the SAS channel. I'm here with another match preview. This time it's Fulham. It's away. It's coming from Craven Cottage at half past four on Sunday, the 21st of April. I'll be live about 30 minutes before kickoff like usual. So that's going to be about four o'clock Sunday afternoon. And yeah, I look forward to seeing you all in there. And if you're new to the channel, feel free to tag along. What I do is I watch the game and I give you all the updates as they happen. Goals substitutions cards absolutely everything and give you my two cents on it also please if you haven't already like the button uh like the button hit the like button and <laughs> also subscribe to the channel i really do appreciate it getting so close to the goal of 150 um subscribers before the end of the season that was the extended goal as well so thanks everybody who's already done that and yeah Let's get into it. So, match preview. How I think the game is going to go. I have been looking at Fulham's form. You know me. Notepad out. Wrote it all down. So, Fulham's form. They're 12th in the league on 42 points. Um, this season, they've played 33 games. Won 12. Drawn 6. Lost 15. Of their last five games, they've won 2. Lost 2. Drawn 1. Um... It's, yeah, it's just a strange one. Fulham, like, when we played them, they seem to be really good. Um, and any time I've seen them play against other teams or anything, they, I, I don't know why they're so far down. Obviously, there, there is a reason. Um, I just don't watch enough of Fulham, really. But that being said, they're only eight points away from European places and with, what, five games to go and just how open the league has been this season, they might think they can squeeze themselves in there. So... This could potentially be a very entertaining game, like it was back in Anfield. More on that in a few. So, um, yeah, this season we've actually played them three times already in the uh, Carabao Cup semi-final. 10th of January was the Anfield leg. We won 2-1. Then on the 24th of January was at Craven Cottage, the second leg, and that was a draw 1-1. So, obviously, we knocked them out 3-2 on aggregate. And then go back to Sunday, the 3rd of December, and... You guys probably remember it. 4-3 in the league at Anfield. And all four of Liverpool's goals were absolute bangers. There was two from Trent. Well, one wasn't really Trent's goal because it hit the crossbar and then hit the keeper, but from a free kick. McAllister with that rocket, it actually got um, goal, of the uh, goal, of the, goal of the month that month. And Endo with a volley from the edge of the penalty area. And then Trent in the last 10 minutes or so with a great shot from the edge of the box as well. Four absolute screamers. I'd love to see more of that. I'd love to see Liverpool score some goals from open play, to be honest with you. Very worrying, worried about that. Um, so, yeah, their overall form as well, because I like to do it from the, the start of the year as well. Their overall form from, from like 2024. They've played 17 games in 2024. They've over the, the Premier League, the Carabao Cup and the FA Cup. They've won six, drawn four, lost seven. So they are... They're losing as many as they're winning. That seems to be it. And they got knocked out of the FA Cup in round four against Newcastle on the 27th of January. That was a 2-0 win for Newcastle, and that was at Craven Cottage as well. So their home form doesn't seem to be anything special, but they just seem to be a bit of a tricky customer, a potential banana skin. Um, but then again, the way Liverpool are at the moment, everything's a potential banana skin. And yeah, so let's... That's Fulham's form. Let's get into Liverpool's form because I'm absolutely sick of it. I'm um, recording this, well, it's quarter to seven on Friday evening. Yesterday, we got knocked out of the Europa League. And that is the worst performance I've seen from Liverpool ever. A lot of people will say, no, the 3-0 last week. That was worse because we went a goal up and you could feel like, do you know what? Liverpool, there's something to fight for here. We've got that goal. And they didn't. They didn't even fight. There was something to be had from that game. And it meant it meant so much. And they didn't. They just they just I don't I don't know why. They just lacked everything. They lacked urgency. They lacked determination. And yeah. It's as though he was at half time, he was like, look, we're out of this cup. Don't worry about it. Just don't concede any goals. We'll worry about the league on Sunday when we play Fulham. That is what it felt like. It felt like they had just given up 
on the cup at half time and absolutely shocking. Salah with that miss, ah, uh, like the lob attempt. I don't know how he's missed that. I mean, all he has to do is hit the target. He's done all the hard work. If he's not confident lobbing the keeper, pass it either side of him. You know, he's the goalkeeper was in no man's land. Salah should be scoring them. So, yeah, as I said, I would love to see Liverpool score some goals from open play. The last one, as I was saying in my stream yesterday, was against United. It was Luis Diaz, um, what, four games ago now. And I don't even think that was a good goal, to be honest with you. I think he's just hit and hoped with that. Um, just the, the whole way he's come onto that ball. So I think that's more of a luck shot than anything. And you can't rely on luck. You have to be banging in these chances. We're so wasteful. It's absolutely disgusting. So with that said, and well, to be honest with you, I, I could keep going on about Liverpool. I'm really, really angry with them at the moment. So I won't anyway, because I'll say someone I'll regret. But let's go and get into my score prediction, which, well... This is this is why it's been difficult because I I don't I just don't know what the score could be. I mean, I think oh yeah, go on, you know it's Fulham. We'll score goals and we'll win the game. The thing is, we're not scoring goals, and I do not I I don't like putting down draws or losses for Liverpool. I I just won't do it. You know they're my team. I want to see them win. So when I predict a score, I predict them to win. But the, you know. The position I'm in is just so difficult. Um, so if I'm going to go for it, we'll concede a goal anyway because we are like a sieve at the back. And I'll go for a Liverpool win, but not by much because we ain't scoring goals. I just don't see... I, I just don't see us scoring goals at the moment. I really don't. It doesn't matter who's on the pitch. Gakpo seems to be the only person who with any bit of fight or determination or actual cutting edge in that final third. And he's not been that effective because he's having to come so far deep to get the ball to actually then go and do anything with it. He's actually probably better off being in a midfield role, which is what I did predict for the last game, but that just didn't happen. So maybe we'll see that today. Uh, not today, in the, the Fulham game. Don't know. So that's what I'm going to go with anyway. Score prediction wise, two one. I'm sort of pushing it with that. I'm pushing it with that. I can see Fulham winning. To be honest, I really can see Fulham winning. And I'm not normally that negative, but I just haven't seen anything from the performance of Liverpool at the moment to suggest anything else. It's been four games. It's slowly been creeping in, and it's been four games that has just been awful. So, let's get on to my lineup prediction, and. There we have it. So in goal, of course, Allison. It's great to have him back. World's number one keeper. Um, yeah, I mean, he can't do anything else really. If the four in front of him are so porous, you know, it's going to be difficult for him anyway. The same as what's happened with Kelleher. Liverpool's defensive line just started dropping off. So then Kelleher started conceding goals. But for a while there, Kelleher was keeping clean sheets and Liverpool were looking solid, but now we just aim. Um, Robertson and Trent as the fullbacks, of course, their first choice, they should be there. For, um, Trent did look really tired yesterday, actually, in the, the Atalanta game, but he did come off after about 60 minutes or so. He, he, there was I mentioned it in the stream as well, just he started putting in crosses and they were just weak, they were under hit, not, hit, not getting to the target. It was about four in a row. And he just looked tired, and then a couple minutes later, he comes off. So it was good minutes for him, but I fully see him starting this one again because there's nobody else to go there other than Gomez. Um, and Robertson, yeah, Robertson's the only one with a bit of desire in the team at the moment, him and Gakpo. Um, so, yeah, of course, they're in. So then centre-backs, Van Dijk and Canate, I'm really, like, a lot of people are just talking about our defence, but nobody's mentioning Canate which is worrying because he is our second best centre-back behind Van Dijk. And if there is going to be this mass exodus and all these players are going to leave Liverpool once Klopp goes as well, you know, Salah, Trent, Van Dijk, Alisson, they're all leaving, then that's going to leave Canate as our first-choice centre-back. 
and his performances over the last few games have been awful. And that's worrying if that's going to be the case. Um, I've put him in there. To be honest, I don't even know why I've put him in there. Just because he's not going to put Gomez there. I thought Gomez was going to start there last night, but he didn't. So I've put Canate there because that's probably what's going to happen. Um, then in midfield, I've gone with Endo, McAllister and Gravenberg. Um, Endo, of course, rested against Atalanta. Probably should have came on in the second half, really. Moved Alexis more forward. Might have turned out differently, but then again, you can, you know, if buts and maybes, Liverpool would do them from the start because they just didn't have it. They just didn't have the heart. Um, so I've gone with Endo, of course, fully rested. You know, he hadn't played for a week. So he'll come straight back in, and he, he he has been great this season. He has gone off a little bit recently, but he's our best option at the number six, so fully behind Endo starting there. Then McAllister and Gravenberg. I don't know why Gravenberg hasn't started more or played more. Um, he didn't play at all yesterday, and I felt like his ability in tight spaces and you you know like i always mention his legs they just get in and pull balls away like if somebody's trying to run away he just he's he's got like long dangly legs that just go in and grab the ball away he just plucks it away from people sort of like how fabinho used to do and i just i felt like that would have really made a difference yesterday and he, he's really good in tight spaces and can work it well and atalanta were pushing so high up and pressing like on every single man the second anybody got the ball they were up against him, and I just felt Gravenberg, with that ability in tight spaces, would have also have made a difference. But he didn't. So, and also, I would drop Saboslai for this game because, well, he didn't have a great game yesterday. He was probably one of the better players on the pitch, which is also very worrying to say. But he just, he looks tired. He, you know, he doesn't look like he's got a full 90 minutes in him. And sometimes you need players to have a full 90 minutes in him. So that's why I would rotate Soboslai out just for the little bit of break, a little bit of rest. I personally would bring Gravenberg in. Could be Gakpo. I honestly would not mind seeing Gakpo in that sort of position, either that side or the opposite side where I've got McAllister. Um, yeah, I, I just doubt it'll happen. I honestly think it's going to be Endo, McAllister and Jones. And I, to be honest with you, I, I would hate to see Jones on the pitch. He was awful yesterday. Just everything he touched was just just useless. Um, nothing good came from him at all. And obviously he's just come back from an injury as well, so I don't want to like lay into him, but he just he just needs to get back up to pace and he's just not there at the moment. And then the forward line, Diaz, Jota and Salah. This will be the game that Jota starts, I do believe, just because he didn't start. We all thought he was going to start last night. He didn't. And then even when he came on, he did not look sharp. But then again, nothing really got to him. I don't even remember Liverpool coming out of the fence for the last like 30 minutes. It was like Alisson just passing it around. It just got so boring and mundane to watch. Um, I was half thinking about turning it off. But of course, my obligation to my stream and my channel, I would never do that because I, I'm here for it. You know, I, I, I enjoy doing it. But sometimes football just gets too fucking boring to watch. Um, so that's how I think it's going to line up. Diaz and Salah. I hope Salah can actually put a shot on target. That's not a penalty. And Diaz the same, really. Um, yeah, Nunes didn't offer anything coming on, so I don't think he'll be there. And also, this will be important for Jota to start getting some match minutes and getting back up to fitness after his injury. So that's why I've gone with that. So in full, that's Alisson. Robertson, Van Dijk, Canate, Trent, Endo, McAllister, Gravenberg, and then Diaz, Jota, and Salah. And with that, guys, let me know how i done. Get in the comments, um, whether you're on Facebook or on YouTube, wherever you're watching. Get in the comments, let me know what you think. And yeah, if i done wrong, if i done right, if, you've, if you think I've made some good points or bad points, let me know. And yeah, if you've got any thoughts about the Europa League exit, Klopp's farewell tour as it is the running anything let me know thanks very much for tuning in like i said i will be live four o'clock on sunday look forward to seeing you all in there until then up the fucking reds